Hey, what's up all you art geeks today? We're going to talk about something that is a fairly common question that I get regarding my oil paintings. And that is, how do you know when your oil painting is done? And this is very subjective. This is a very tricky question to answer, but I do have ChatGPT to give me a little assist. I did ask ChatGPT this question, how do you know when an oil painting is done? And it gave me some decent pointers. It gave me about nine different points. We're gonna go through some of them, maybe all of them. We'll see how good they are. Okay, so what is ChatGPT saying here? It starts off with determining when an oil painting is finished is subjective. Well, that's exactly what I said a second ago. That's great. It sounds like we're on the same page. And it's a personal decision for each artist is the next thing it says here. Okay, well, that makes sense. It is something that is every artist's decision to make. If you're a hyper-realist, I guess you're going to simply look at it and go, does this thing look hyper-real? That's a pretty simple way to decide whether it's done. There are a lot of other examples of varying artwork, but before we go down into the weeds with that, I just want to quickly mention that I do have a Patreon account where this very painting is a tutorial where I go into all the colors, the color mixing. You're going to learn everything about making this painting from getting the palette started to the final completion. So check that out, especially if it's a portrait that you're trying to get better at painting. All right, so let's get back to what ChatGPT's nine bullet points are. The first one is achievement of intentions. And that makes sense to me. I would say that every painting I do, there is an intention that I have at the very beginning. Sometimes it veers off course and I have to make adjustments to what my intentions are because it just doesn't go always exactly as it's planned. I'll have some ideas, those sort of flashes in my mind of what this final painting will look like. And it does take a turn usually. It doesn't quite go as planned, but that's a good thing. I like to respond to the th marks that I've made and go different directions and allow it to do that. I like to be spontaneous and not be too rigid with my initial vision of the painting. All right, the next one is composition and balances. ChatGPT's second one here. The one thing I look at the most is probably tonal composition is something that I'm obsessed with. If I don't have a good tonal composition to my painting, if I was to make it black and white, does it look right as a black and white painting? There's other things besides tonal composition that I look at, like color, form, where are the focal points at? Is it just harmoniously arranged? All these kinds of things definitely are important. Number three is really great, detail and brushwork from ChatGPT. I like this one because I use this quite a bit in my work. I have some detail and I have a lot of brushwork. I have a balance of those two. And it says here from ChatGPT, assess the level of detail and the quality of brushwork. With my paintings, I'm always going for a wide variety of detail and a wide variety of brushwork. So I'm using different brush sizes and things like that to get different widths of brush strokes. So as long as I have a good varied amount of different types of brush strokes, I'm pretty happy. The next one here is color harmony. If your colors are not in harmony, if there is just too much color, maybe you're using way too many primary and secondary colors at their full strength, you need to have a plan of attack when it comes to color. So one of the biggest mistakes most new artists make is that they think that adding every single color under the rainbow at full strength is the way to make an impressive painting. And that's absolutely not the case. You maybe wanna have one or two colors that are the star, usually just one. And then you want maybe another color that's pretty strong, but it's an accent. And then you want some nice earthy colors, some nice desaturated colors, some things to balance out all the colors. So make sure to harmonize your colors or so many different ways to do that. And as you can see with this painting, I'm not using any full strength colors. All of my paints have been mixed down to a somewhat desaturated color, but not fully grays and browns. There's some color happening, but nothing is fighting each other too much color wise. Now, once I get to the end of this painting, I do throw in some intense colors and that's just how I like to paint. I like to build up intense color as I get to that second, third, fourth layer. So, all right, the next one is technical execution and it says evaluate the technical aspects of the painting, such as the blending of colors, layering, and texture. That's a good one by ChatGPT. It's always good to have a good technically sound painting. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. That can mean so many different things. Are you going for hyperrealism? Then that's the technical bar that you're setting for yourself. There are so many different ways to technically execute a painting. It really just depends on the theme of your paintings, the style of your paintings. So just make sure that you're staying consistent with what you're trying to achieve. And that will really help you figure out what you're technically trying to produce with your work. Viewer engagement. This is another one I think that ChatGPT nailed. 
I definitely am always considering this when I create my paintings. There are some easy ways to go about giving yourself a good engaging painting. I think using the full gamut of dark to light so that your contrast levels are really strong, using some color but not too much, having a good subject matter in your work. What's the subject of your painting? What is the theme of your paintings? All of these things can really help the engagement level for the viewer. The next one I really love, and that is restraint. This is a good one because it's something I remind myself of all the time. I'm always trying to remind myself that less can be more. And this is true for texture, is true for color. This is true for what is happening overall in your painting in general. I think one of the best examples of using restraint is if you have an abstract painting, if you're an abstract painter or maybe even a portrait painter, the one thing you need to realize is you need some calm in your paintings. And that could be areas where you're just not using a lot of texture or a lot of color. And then you find those areas that have that focal point and that's where you put in all the extra effort. So just remember your painting doesn't have to be super complex to be super successful. Okay, now we're on to a new one here called Fresh Perspective. And I have to read what this says here. Take breaks during the painting process to gain a fresh perspective. Oh, okay. I see what it means now. When I've been looking at a painting for four hours, I've been painting into it, I lose perspective on what I'm doing or what I'm seeing. So when I go and take a break, it could be as simple as just 10 minutes. But if you go a whole day, there is something about looking at your painting that you've worked on for that long you will see it with a fresh pair of eyes and you'll see all kinds of things that you wouldn't have seen if you didn't take a break from it. Okay, now the final one here is feedback. And this one is tricky because asking for feedback on whether a painting is done really depends on who you're asking. If you're asking somebody that's working on the same kind of paintings you are, they have a lot of knowledge on what you're trying to produce, that could be a lot more useful than, say, asking a family member or a friend that has no idea what you're trying to produce or doesn't really have any idea about art in general. So make sure when you ask for feedback that you're asking the right people. And even then, I'd say make sure to evaluate what they've said about it and then decide for yourself, make that personal decision whether your work is done. Now, I think overall, all these tips are completely valid. I think ChatGPT did give some good points. But overall, there's one thing you have to listen to as well, and that is your gut. There is a time when you can just look at a painting, maybe give it a day, look at it the next day. And if you look at it and go, yes, that is done, that is usually a good sign that is done. Don't decide it's done right after you finish painting for four hours, but wait till the next day. If you look at it and your gut is telling you, every part of your being is telling you that that painting is done, then stop working on it. You have completed your task and go on to the next one. I would love to know your thoughts on this subject, so please put some comments down below. Once again, if you do want to learn more about my process, about oil painting in general, check out my Patreon account where there's a bunch of tutorials on there. Thank you so much for checking out another one of my videos, you art geeks. I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.